بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم نوذت عنهم وتعنيم وذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاع والفات والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير إضغاء وجلة ومرضاته وقربه وطوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع نطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم اللهم إن سبك العين من الدنيا وإن شرب السوف الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سبك العين من الدنيا وإن شرب السوف الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سبك العين من الدنيا وإن شرب السوف الهني وهب يغني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين Alright, so Alhamdulillah, we are resuming our classes after a very, very long break of Ramadan and Shawwal. Right, and also almost Luka Aida, the entire Luka Aida also from break. Because <laughs> tomorrow, tonight, uh, starts the first night of Zul Hijjah. And it's recommended right, from a hadith, from the hadith of the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaihi Wasallam to fast the days of Zul Hijjah, right, especially the ninth of Zul Hijjah, which is the Yamul Arafah. Right, to fast in Arafah, and but also to just fast from the first to the Ninth all the way, right? That is recommended, and it's in a hadith by Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, right? That fasting one day in Zulul Hijjah is equal to fasting a year, right? Uh, in uh, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the nights of Zulul Hijjah are the best of nights, right? There are narrations from the hadith of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, right? That mentioned about the the greatness of this night that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has sworn by this night in Surah Fajr. So the fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has sworn by this night, of course, there are different opinions, opinions as to what are the ten nights. But some uh, a, 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 a good a, a, a big group of scholars they do say these ten nights are nights of Zul Hijjah uh, are the nights where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala swears by in Surah Fajr. Right, so these nights are the nights where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala accepts du'as, like Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala accepts repentance. Right, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, gazes upon His creation. Right, so it's only on us for us to gain as much as we can. Right, from the great nights of Zul Hijjah beginning tonight. Right, tonight is the first night of Zul Hijjah. Also for those people who are offering uh, sacrifice. Right, so if you are sending money to offer sacrifice anywhere in the world, right, then it is sunnah for us not to clip our nails or uh, cut our hands. Right, from the hadith from the hadith of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam. Right, that for those who are offering sacrifice, not to clip their nails. I right, ought to cut their hairs from tonight. Right, so now you can if you want here on the clip your nails quickly tonight. Right, uh, uh, is this is after Asar later on. Clip your nails, cut your hair, right, uh, shave whatsoever. So because on the first uh, until your udhiya, right, until your sacrificial animal is sacrificed, right, then for you to uh, uh, not uh, then you only you can actually clip your nails and cut your hair, right. So. So, Alhamdulillah, right, so, so we are ending Zul Hijjah one of the greatest days. Right, we are going back to, uh, to our book, Minhaj Al-Abidin, right, Ila Jinnah Tadrabi Al-Alamin, right, the, the, the path of the worshipful servant to the gardens of the Lord of the Worlds by the great scholar right, and the mujaddid right, of, uh, and, and, the, uh, and the proof of his religion, right, Abi Hamid Muhammad bin Ahmad Al-Ghazali, Imam Ghazali, Al-Tusi, Al-Tabarani, Al-Shafi'i, radiyallahu anhu, wa ardahu. Right, so his and this book is a book whereby he wrote at the end of his life, right, to teach people uh, or to write for people a path, right, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, so uh, Muhammad. Right, so we have taken that you know Imam Ghazali began with the first the first barrier between a person and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is knowledge. Right, we want to go through a bit of which each time we come back to this book, eh? so that we get we we follow the discussion that is that is being uh, laid out in this book. And so the first, uh, so he speaks about, you know, that the whole point of life, right, is to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And Allah has taught us how to do this right, by worship, ibadah. Right? So if a person, so, by, by, so worship is the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us on how do we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that Allah wants us to. Right? And it's by worship. Right? However, in worship, Right, uh, there are barriers. Right, that, uh, it could be that the person could spend his entire life worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right, but never move close towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? All of the worship comes out to be empty, and it comes out to be you know meaningless right, in their worship. And it could be, and many people have gone through from the time they were they reached puberty till the time they are fifty or sixty, and their worship day in and day out is just emptiness. Uh, it's empty. They just go through the, the motions. They go through the rituals, right? And they don't feel anything. They don't, uh, and they don't. They don't feel any closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
So mga zali, he, 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 he identifies eight, seven uh, hurdles. Right? Seven hurdles between a person in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? in India, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And right? we have taken, the, we are th- we're on the third hurdle. Eh? The third hurdle. We're going to go to the fourth hurdle. The third hurdle is the biggest hurdle. So we've been on this hurdle for a long, long time. Right? Been like, you know, since, since, I don't know when, <laughs> since we've been on this hurdle. Right? It's, like, 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 it's, 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 really, it's very long. Right? And the fourth hurdle also is a very long hurdle. Right? It's the third and the fourth hurdle. So most people, for, for their entire lives, they are encircling around third and fourth hurdle. Right? They, they can't go past the third and the fourth hurdle because they're still, they're still there. Right? They're still getting around the dunya, getting around people, getting around uh, their self, getting around shaifan, right? Do, you know, and all of these uh, uh, hindrances. So the first hurdle that we mentioned right, in this book, Imam Ghazali mentioned in this book, is the hurdle of knowledge. Right? Because to, to actually worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well. In the way that Allah has taught us through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the first hurdle. And we went through in depth right, the importance of knowledge and also what kind of knowledge to seek. We have gone through that already. Right? And then we went into the second hurdle, which is the hurdle of tawbah. The hill of repentance because a person cannot soar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, for as long as they are weighed down right, with sin. Right? So they are weighed down with sin or they are uh, uh, burdened right, with sins, they can't actually get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, and it causes a blackness over the heart right, and a block right, from receiving uh, guys receiving light. So, the hill of repentance is important. Right, to repent over and over again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a daily practice to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so after the hurdle of repentance we come into the hurdle of hindrances right, what hinders a person from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and under these hindrances Imam Ghazali he identifies four main hindrances to a person right, so what are the four main hindrances right, the four main hindrances he goes by easiest to most difficult Right, the easiest hindrance to the most difficult hindrance, right? So the or obstacle, lah. Uh, obstacle to the most difficult obstacle. And what are they? Right, the easiest one is dunya, right? Then, but you should memorize by now, eh? Right, this one is dunya. Then, shaitan. Is it people first? <laughs> people, right? <laughs> so I hesitated. <laughs> right, dunya is first. Right, dunya is first because dunya is easy. Dunya is just this by contemplating over the the uh, the fleetingness of dunya, should turn you away from dunya already. And when we say dunya, we mean money, prestige, wealth, luxury, right? Anything that distracts a person from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is called dunya. Right? That is the definition of dunya. Eh? Right? Anything that distracts a person from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is called dunya. Right, so, it, so it, you know, it, uh, the alam, the creation is a different thing. Right, that is a creation. Right, but the dunya is basically, uh, most of it is actually money. Lah, right? Right, going, uh, focusing on money, on, on vanity. Vanity, on uh, popularity, right? uh, on uh, showing off right, to each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, He does spell out to us what is dunya. Right, says dunya is, you know, uh, uh, dunya is, is, is beautification. Right, dunya is uh, your your they call it your steeds. You know, your steeds meaning your your fine horses. Right, in our time, will be your cars, right, your cars, your vehicles. Right, the showing off of houses. You know, showing off of you know all of this is all is part of the dunya. And right, this is the to Imam Ghazali is the easiest one, the easiest one to handle. Right, because it's just just reflect on it, and you see how easily it gets used up. Right, you have it, and then you stop me. It spoils and it goes away. Right, so so someone who, who understands this, you know, you don't spend your entire life attaining this, because you know, and, 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 and in any case, when you die, it's gone. That's it, it's gone. When you die, it goes to other people. Right, even the money that you hoard in your lifetime, when you die, it's not yours. It goes to other people as inheritance. Right, so dunya to him is easiest. You know, you just look around you, and you really see that it's not worth. Uh, you know, spending your entire life trying to earn money or trying to gain recognition or trying to gain popularity or trying to uh, uh, in Arabic, you say, you know, to boast in front of men, right? All of this is not, you know, it, it comes to nothing on the day of judgment, right? especially when it comes to ibadah, people who actually use the, their religion for dunya, they sell their religion for their for, for, for dunya in a sense, right? They seek the religion 
only to show off and only to for people to praise them only for popularity and or some people they, they seek religion for money I to gain money from the religion and this is of the worst uh, 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 Sayyidina Omar right? he says of the worst use of dunya or like you know you've, you've used something so great and so high the religion to gain something so low and despicable which is the dunya right? this is something that is like, you know, is beyond uh, a Muslim to actually do right? in that way you want to get dunya you use your own dunya to get dunya right? you don't use the religion to get uh, dunya that is the first one that's the easiest Imam Ghazali is the easiest the right? second one is people Right, people distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Of course people they are also part of a dunya But Imam Ghazali he separates them from a dunya Because their, their distraction is higher and right, stronger right, Because people comment, people praise, criticize right, People uh, uh, stop you from your worship right, People they comment on you they distra- they, they, Either they, they discourage you or they distract you from your worship, right? So people, eh, we went through the entire thing about about not being so obsessed with people, not caring so much what people say, people do, and people want, and people people that. Right? But the focus on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah is your focus, and when you do this with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, everything will fall into place. Right? That's what he's saying. Eh? So Imam Ghazali spoke about people as being distractions, right, to us, and then he spoke about shaitan. And shaitan is easy because shaitan he's an enemy, right? That is outside of us, and we know that you know for uh, that Allah subhanahu wa taala has taught us right, that for shaitan you say I want to be like shaitan in regime, he should run away. Right? But the problem is right, with shaitan is that you sometimes you don't even know if the whispers in your head is from him or not, but he's very sly, right? so his whispers will not be outright do this mass yet. You know, he's not going to be that Because he's very smart, Shaitan He knows that if he says, you know, go and kill someone Or go and drink alcohol Or go and, you know If he says that, no one will listen to him Because it's an outright munkar It's an outright maasya Right, so Shaitan You know, he So in the Quran also says he has khutuwat He has steps It's not one step It has steps Right, one by one Step by step Shaitan brings you from the From your state of obedience To a permissible state Permissible Right, and then to a shubhat state, right, uncertainty there where it's halal or not, and then into haram all the way. Right, so shaitan is not going to bring you all the way in one go to haram, right, but he's going to bring you step by step. You know, he's going to tuck bit by bit at you until before you know it, you fall into the haram. Right, so as we know, like you know, for example, when it comes to zina, right, it begins with the glance, then it begins with the smile, then it begins with the chatting. Then he begins with the attachment. Right? Then, then, then. Right? So Shaitan, he goes like, he goes in that way. Right? He goes in that way. So chatting first for, a, for a while online. Chatting is okay, right? They say chatting is okay. You can, that's what they say. Right? They say it's okay because you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't meet the person. You know, and you don't commit any sin. Right? But Shaitan needs to take step, 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 step. Until you actually transgress uh, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Shaitan. Right, so uh, that was the third hindrance. And the fourth hindrance that we have here, which is the most difficult one, is the nafs. Right, nafs that amara bisu. Right, the self. Right, the self that uh, commands to evil. And this self, right, this nafs that amara bisu, amara to bisu, the self that commands to evil, right, it is uh, the most difficult of enemies because it is within the person, it's within you. Right, it is uh, beloved to you, right, and in the, it, there's nothing you can do to get rid of it. <laughs> you can't kill it, right? Like, like, like for dunya, you can choose to have zuhud, you know, you can abstain from dunya and you cannot allow yourself to actually enjoy dunya. You can, and after a while, you just get used to not having dunya, right? People, you can also stay away from them if you want, right? be, be cordial, be nice, right? but you don't have to be close to anyone if you don't want to. Uh, it's okay uh, It's okay You don't have to be close to anyone If you don't want to Especially those who are Not good for you in your religion uh, Those who are good for you in your religion Then it is recommended For you to be close to these people Right Shaitan is You say Alhamdulillah Mishra Tanarajim He runs away uh, Hopefully he runs away <laughs> He runs away uh, So the problem now Is a nafs Nothing you can do Will get rid of your nafs uh, Your nafs is there Inside of you What you can only do Is to train this nafs In Mughal Ali says uh, You train it An animal inside of you You're going to rein it and you're going to train it, right, to do what Allah loves. 
right? So the now is good. Is the nuts? Is 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 a is an impulse? Is a push? Right? It is a strength that's inside of you that naturally pulls you towards what will destroy you. Naturally, and you see in children, naturally they will do things, right? Uh, that will destroy the akhirah. Right? They that they're selfish. Right, they scream, they shout, they they bite, they punch, they whatsoever. They do all kinds of things. So it's a natural state of human being. They are born that way, right? And they have this, you know, animalistic, they call it animalistic behavior right, of the human being. Right? But with religion, the human being is trained, right, to be a proper human being. So the nafs has to be has to be trained. So Imam Ghazali he goes into the training of the nafs, right, uh, in the first part. And now we have, we have reached the part whereby he is going through the different limbs of the person. I end the training of the limbs, right? Because on the outward, the nafs will manifest itself on the limbs. So before you can actually really train your nafs, you're going to train the outward manifestation of the nafs, which is your limbs. So we spoke about the hands, we spoke about the eyes, we spoke about the tongue, right? All of these things have their own, you know, uh, nafs. They have their own desires to do harm towards others and in turn harming itself. Right, and they, they also have their own uh, forms of worship. We have reached the most difficult of them. Right, it is the heart. So we have taken you know, other limbs. Now we have reached the heart. And the heart is the most difficult because the heart, the, the worship and the you know, disobedience of the heart is something that is not tangible. It's not tangible. Right? Your, for, your, for your limbs, it's tangible. Right? For, your, for your hands, it's tangible. For your eyes, it's tangible. You can see what is hard and what is not haram. Right, your 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 tongue. You can see what is halal and what is haram. You can you can hear the words. Right, your hands. You can do. You can type things. You can use your hands for halal or for haram. Your feet, same thing. You can go towards places that is halal or go towards places that is haram. So these are tangible things. The heart is very subtle. It's not tangible. Right, so it's very you know like like only when you're aware, then you realize your heart is actually committing sins. Right, and when you're not aware. You actually don't realize you're actually deep into sin with your heart without even realizing it. Right? For example, and that's what we had earlier today, for example, the sin of jealousy, of hasad, envy. Right? How many people actually suffer from envy? You know, they, they have a disease of envy, but they're not aware they are envious. Right? And not only are they not aware, they don't find it a problem that they're envious, but they're so consumed by their envy that they, are, they, 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 they justify all they do to be halal. So not only, you know, it's a final law, it can be, so you think it's an, it's an obvious disease. You're envious, you're jealous. And you don't allow someone, you know, something or, or you don't want to give them something or you, 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 you speak badly of them because at the core of it, you have this envy that's in you. So if someone is aware that in my heart, I have, an, I have envy towards a particular person, if you're aware, straight away, you'll be like, oh, stuff, Allah al azim uh, you, you try to find ways to get rid of that envy because you know it's a destructive disease that will destroy you more than the other person. And they say that envy is like someone who is, who is eating poison and hoping the other person dies. And that's, that's envy. You are just hurting your own self. You're eating poison, you're hoping the other person dies. Right? So, so who's the one who's being hurt when it comes to envy? And envy can move a person to the most heinous of uh, ma'asiyat. Uh, which is basically, which is uh, black magic, right? Slander, destroy a person's name, whatsoever. You can do it into the worst, worst of, of diseases or worst of ma'asyat because of this disease of envy. And envy itself is called a minor shirik. It is a minor shirik because in a, in a way, when you are envious of a person, you are indirectly saying that you don't agree with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving someone what they have. Right and that and, and not to give you, right. So when you see other people having you know like husband or having wealth, having job, having you know uh, family, having even iman, even having uh, you know uh, ibadah, people can be envious in that way in an ugly way. You get they say there is a good way and there is an ugly way also, right. So when somebody having all of these things, people praising them, saying good things about them, right, and then they feel this strong sense of envy, hatred towards that person. I, in a way, you're, it's as if she's saying that, you know, Allah gives so and so such a good husband, right? They didn't give me, right? So your your envy, in a sense, you're like, you disagree with that. You disagree that Allah subhanahu wa gave someone that their rizki, you know, and they didn't give you their rizki, right, in a way. And also, it shows the discontentment with what Allah has given you, yourself. 
you're not happy. And so it is a, the ulama say it is a form of shirk. It is a form of shirk, right? Because you are in a sense you, you in a sense you you are in directly saying you know better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if you know better. As if you know Allah made a mistake in giving someone some, whatever they get the where they have and then you know better. And you should even with you right, instead of them. And there is the, 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 some of us call say that envy is one of the worst, worst diseases of the heart. Envy. And it can really destroy a person in this world and the next world. Eh? Envy. And that was the first disease that we saw manifest in Iblis. A disease of jealousy, of envy when he saw Nabi Adam And that was a disease that manifested in Iblis. That's why you see, when it comes to the nafs, right? We say, uh, the, nafs, the, the problem of the nafs is the first problem to manifest in Allah's creation. Uh, because when it comes to the first ma'asiyat, the first disobedience, and that is Iblis refusing to bow Nabi Adam alayhi salam, right? He refused to bow. Look at all the four situations, right? There was no dunya, they're in paradise. Right? There was no people, who are the people there? So people to, to influence Iblis, right? And, and there was no shaitan, because Iblis is shaitan, right? He can later comes around being shaitan. So what was the one thing that was, that caused that first ma'asiyat? That caused that first uh, disobedience That was the nafs The nafs of Iblis and His own nafs caused him to disobey The first three were not there right? Dunya, people, shaitan They were all not there They were not present yet in that time and It was only one thing that caused Iblis to disobey That was the nafs And nafs of Iblis caused him to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And from the nafs it was actually the envy right? That was sitting in his nafs That he was envious of Nabi Adam Islam, Which also led to his arrogance eh? So that is where we are at right now. Eh? So I'm going to recite eh, about, about Hasad. I'm going, to re- I'm going to read about Hasad. So here he says, وَأَمَّا الْحَسَدُ and as for Hasad, فَإِنَّهُ مُفْسِدُ لِلْطَاعَاتِ For surely it corrupts your acts of obedience. It destroys your acts of obedience. الْبَاعِثُ عَلَى الْخَطِيئَاتِ right? It pushes you towards doing what is haram, what is wrong. Uh, hasad. It justifies for you and it beautifies for you sin. Do you know where it is, Zahra? You're finding, finding me. Here, Hasad. It comes after. Um, I don't know. You can't find a picture of you. The eye jump. I didn't jump, right? Did I jump? Huh? The uh, yes, spoiler of obedience. The yes, spoiler of obedience. Guy, go backwards or forward? Okay. Then move forward. Where do you put until? Yeah. Of greed. Oh, I didn't it's finish greed. that. Yeah, but, 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 yeah. but yeah. I also I missed worry. all you missed lessons. Worried that. But <laughs> for me, lesson, right? and I'm not stable on the topic of my life. Okay, but okay. for you, it doesn't matter. For me, I think I'm here. Yeah, for you, not miss. For you, not miss. Yeah, for you. What? What? So where are you? The one that we all think we miss is one one nine. Where, 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 where is it? فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ We are there. Okay, then I'm going back. I thought they were doing Hasad. <laughs> For some reason, I just, I just thought we stopped at Hasad. Okay, so we're here. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَدْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Right, so yeah, it is having, having uh, long hope. I will at the at the disease of the heart having long hope and uh, the the yes two al amal and long hope the two al amal we spoke about we spoke about <laughs> we spoke about Amazina uh, Muhammad the effects right, of having long hopes right, in life there was the, this is one of the diseases of the heart having long hopes long hopes mean what you think you're gonna live for a long time right so you you tend to procrastinate. Uh, your acts of obedience because you think to yourself no 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 I have to do this to do this 
Jesus first, right? To settle my life first, right? Then I'll begin to worship. Then I'll begin to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is called tool al amal right? And I mentioned it before, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereby he drew the he drew the, he drew the, 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 the square, right? And he drew, uh, who, okay. <laughs> okay, basically he did this. Right, so basically he did this. <laughs> Right, so he from the center of the box, he drew out and he says that this is his amal. And his amal meaning his, uh, his hopes. Right, so his ajal, his lifespan, stops him. <laughs> right, and his hopes go way past his, uh, his, his lifetime. Right, and in between, there are ma'arib. Was it ma'arib? Right, things that will happen to him. I to go. I think it will happen to him to get him to wake up in his agent. Right. So if he does not get hit by one, the animal will hit him. Otherwise, he will keep going and aiming for his hope until he hits his death day. And he dies. And then... So if he hits him, the hope will kill him? Yeah. Or the ma'arik. The ma'arik is to wake him up to his agent. His focus... Nah? Then he was forgot. Then he he then he was stop having these high hopes. The but then, but then <laughs> depending, depending. So, so, so the hadith goes: it doesn't get to him, this gets to him. It doesn't get to him, this gets to him. It doesn't get to him, this gets to him until his other gets to him. And that means he is given signs by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala throughout his life. What is the wake up call? Ma'arid, ma'arid, ma'arid. Like things that that that, that can you? Arada, yes, arada. Right, things that, that, that afflict you. Right? So, yeah, so it's just like wake up calls. Huh? You're given a few wake up calls until if you keep ignoring them and keep, no, 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 I have to. No, I have to earn that kind of money. I have to. I say, for example, if someone, for example, like someone doesn't break and says, oh, I have to work the entire time. I have to work all day to earn this kind of money, to buy this kind of house, cash, right? Then I can rest. You know, then I'll begin to break. And then I'll begin to do my ibadah. Then I'll begin. Then I'll begin. Right, so I need to get it first. So this person, for example, works all the time. Right, so the first ma'ari that happens to him, for example, eh, the first happens to him that, that maybe his uh, sibling passes away. You know, someone close passes away. That is the first, you know, obstacle. Right? And then, you know, it gets affected and whatsoever. But then he goes over it. Ignores it. He goes further. Right? Then, uh, the second one comes in. Right? And for example, he loses his job. So he lost his job, so now he has time to reflect and think. Right? But he doesn't want to do that. He goes around and looking for another job. Right? But still not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So he says he has wake up calls or he falls sick. You know, or something. All makes things happen to him right? to wake him up. Right? But if he still continues aiming at his dunyawi goal, his tool, amal, aiming at his dunyawi goal, right? uh, forgetting his ajal, right? then eventually the thing that will stop him is his death. And it's too late. Okay. Ah, you, you get it. I had a hard issue. What if the wake up call is the, the wake up call makes him wake up? He's still not. He's still alive. He's not dead. So it, he stays. The, the line yeah. Then goes. his armor goes down. So uh, the line goes inside and it's the box. Yeah. So that means he's, he's he has his hopes, right? But not forgetting that he can die anytime. Okay. Uh, so he's living his oh. life. Uh, he's living his life. You know, try, keeping his armor, still having hopes. Uh, but but making sure that he's living his life that he's gonna die in time. Uh, that's why the saying that is that is highly uh, uh, misunderstood saying. No, not highly misunderstood lah, But it's it's understood in a different way, right? The the, the saying that goes, you know, you work for your dunya as you're gonna be forever, and you work for your akhira as you're gonna be tomorrow, as you die tomorrow, right? So the, the 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 so some people they say, okay, you know what? So you work for your dunya, you work all the way, you give your all for your dunya. But when you work for your akhira, you give your all because tomorrow you're gonna die. 
Right. Some scholars they do say they do say they say as she means that you have your dunya in a way that dunya can be procrastinated in a way. That means not to waste all time lah, but in a sense you can you can you like you have time for dunya, right? But akhirah can be procrastinated. It means now you must pray, now you must change, now you must talk, but now you must uh, you have no more time. Now you have no more time to procrastinate. Uh, you have to do it now. Right? So when you commit sin, you know the tawbah is now. Not tomorrow, not next, not, 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 not next week. Right? In, 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 in a way. You, you get it. Right? In, in, in that sense. Eh? Right? So, it was my Allah. Right? So, it, I mean, in a way lah. In a way. That is called Turul Amas. It's a disease. It's a disease of, 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 of human beings. Eh? Right? To have a uh, long hope uh, that makes them, to so long hope, it makes them neglect preparing for death. That's what it does. Right? They don't prepare for death. Okay. Yeah. Right. And we, and we mentioned uh, the far the we mentioned the four uh, effects of what to- long hope does to a person. The first is be a revision, eh? The first being that they will leave acts of obedience or be lazy about it. Right? They leave acts of obedience or be lazy about it. The second one is that they will leave uh, Taubat They will not Taubat Or they will procrastinate Taubat Because they think they have time to Taubat Right So they, they're just going to enjoy their sin now Then when they're older They will change themselves And they will get better And, and not uh, uh, be deep into sin And number three Right Is that they uh, They will be they, they will be Fervent You know Or they will, they will Spend their entire time uh, Gathering And being busy With this dunya And they have no issues doing that they spend the whole day on dunya and nothing on akhirah. And they know just doing that. Eh? That is the, the, the third. And the fourth one is that their heart becomes hardened. It actually hardens their heart. That any advice, any uh, uh, counsel given to them, any rep- uh, rep- reprimand given to them, it just bounces off of them. They don't hear it. <coughs> it just comes and it bounces off. It goes away. Right? That is called having a hardened heart. Right, and that is why the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran, right, that they are that Allah says Fakala Alayhi Mul Amadu, right, and their hopes became long on them, right? They they had long hopes. Fakasat kulu buhum and their hearts became hardened. So this is the, the proof of this is in the Quran itself. That having long hope actually hardens the heart. Right. So we are at here for for event. Innaka idha tawwalta amalaka Yes, so then You, if you were to lengthen your hopes Qallat uh, ta'atika uh, right? Your obedience will be minimal Wa ta'akharat tawbatika And your repentance will be delayed Wa katurat ma'asiyatika And your disobedience will be abandoned Wa shtadda hirsuka and your holding on to this dunya will be stronger and more intense. You can't let go of this dunya and hold it on. Wakasa kuluduka, and your heart will be hardened. Wagumat ghaflatuka min al aqiba, al aqiba, and your heedlessness on, uh, you know, on, on the next, on, 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 on heedlessness of death. Al aqiba means death. Your heedlessness of death becomes uh, severe. They're severely heedless of death. Right. وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ إِنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمِ اللَّهِ آخِرَتُكَ فَأَيُّ حَالٍ أَسْوَأُ مِنْ هَذِهِ right. And then if all this has happened to you, your akhirah will go. That means it will be destroyed. Your akhirah will, will go, it will be destroyed. And it's going to protect us. And if all have mercy on us, we protect us. Right, and which or and what kind of uh, which which state is worse than the state of a person who has reached the situation uh, of having a hard and hard of having uh, intense heedlessness of having uh, uh, of holding strong holding on strongly to his dunya right of uh, delaying his tauba and of minimal of, of having minimal acts of obedience right? what kind of what what worse situation is that for a human being to be in and all of this comes from long having long hopes. And which calamity is worse than this? And all of this is because of having high hopes, having long hopes. 
wa amma in qas in qasarta amalaka wa qarrabta min nafsika mautaka and he says here and as for if you were to shorten your hopes of having a long life should you have a long life and you bring close to yourself death you make that clear in front of your eyes close to yourself wa dhakarta hala aqranika wa ikwani wa ikwanika alladhina ghafa ghafa sahum الموت في وقت لم يحتسبوه and if you remind yourself of the situation of your contemporaries or your friends or your brothers like who death came to them in a time whereby they were least expected and we know of people who are our age or a bit older than us or younger than us whom, to whom death came to them and they were the least uh, prepared right, for, for, for death and when it comes, one can achieve, the one can, can, can make it uh, delay or go back. وَلَعَلَّ حَالَكَ مِثْلُ حَالِهِمْ And he says, and perhaps your stake is like their stake. And you Allah protect us from that. We know of people who were prepared for that, who were very much prepared for that. And when death came, you know, they embraced that. Right? But there are many people who, when death came to them, they were not prepared at all right, for that. And he says, you could be like them. Right? Your state could very well be their state. And be, be aware the books of Maghazali, it, it, they, they shake you. <laughs> they, you know, it's very heavy. Right? His words are heavy. Right? Because it's not, this, this life is not a joke. It's not a joke. Right? This life is, is a short time. Get it right. Get it done. And then go on to the next world. And that's where you're going to rest. You're going to relax the next world. And so it has to be heavy. He's of the way of Rasulullah SAW also. He was said by someone in the tribe. When Rasulullah SAW, you know, uh, some Sahaba the tribe were saying that he was always heavy. And it says, thinking, thinking, thinking. Another, another uh, riwayat says, he was always smiling and jovial. So, Allah, Allah. so there are two, uh, two riwayat, uh, there are two uh, uh, narrations. The first narration, when they say he's always very heavy, is when he, he's by himself and he ponders about this life, about his ummah, right, about his followers, about those who are committing sin, about these believers. When he's pondering about his entire situation and the reality of his life, then he becomes heavy. When he counts the Sahaba, he becomes heavy. And when he reprimands them, he becomes heavy. Right? But when he is, you know, greeting people, right? When there are times where he will greet people, he have small talk with people that is halal. You know, he will you know he will be with people, you will see him light right? and smiling at people. So it's a, it's a balance. You know, too? Right? Because there's something like this, that laughing too much will make the heart, the hearts hard. Uh, laughing too much, too much laughter. Right? So to laugh, 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 to joke all the time, to always, you know, try never having heaviness in your life. You should have every day, once a day at least. And actually, in fact, after every prayer, <laughs> you should have a bit of heaviness. If you reflect on your life, where are you needed? Right? Where, where, where are you at? After how many years? Right? Think of yourself, now how old are you? Last year, next year, you know, what is your goal? What, is your aim? Where are you, what are you doing with your life? Right? So you think after every prayer, and to prepare yourself for uh, death. So he says here, Muslim Muhammad. So he says here, "La ala hala ta mistu halihim kul ta li nafsika." So you say to yourself, "Ihdari ya nafsi al gharur wa dhuri ma qala awl bin Abdullahi rahim rahimahullah." He says, "Oh my, oh my soul, be warned." I owe myself be born, oh myself who is deluded. I love Sula Gharur. I owe myself who is deluded. Be warned. Right? Or take 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 heed. And remember the words of Aun bin Abdullah, Rahimahullah, one of the uh, one of the uh, pious predecessors, right? Aun bin Abdullah, who said, Come min mustaqbalin ya man lam yastakmil ku wa man wa muntadirin ghadan lam yadrikhu. وَلَوْ رَأَيْتُمْ الْأَجَلَ وَمَسِيرَهُ أَبْغَتْتُمْ الْأَمَلَ وَغَرُورَهُ Right, so he says, how, how many people today who are expecting the future, right, they do not, uh, they do not complete the day right, to meet the future. And how many are waiting for tomorrow, but they never meet tomorrow. And if you were to see where is your ajal, if you were to be able to see the ghaib, you know, see the unseen, and see where is your ajal, 
right? And you see how it's moving so quickly towards you. Right? Every moment is moving towards you. Right? You would hate this having long hope and being deluded. وأما سمع وأما سمعت قول عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام. Have you not heard the words of Isa bin Maryam, and of Isa bin Maryam, عليه السلام? الدنيا ثلاثة أيام. The دنيا is three days. The دنيا is three days. أمس مضى ما ما بيدك منه شيء. So the first day is yesterday. He has gone past. And what is left in your hands? You know what? What okay, is left in your hands? وَغَدٍ لَا تَدْ لَا تَدْرِي أَتَدْرُكُهُ أَمْ لَا And tomorrow, you have no clue if you're gonna see it or not. وَالْيَوْمِ And today, أَنْتَ فِيهِ فَغَتَنِمُهُ And the day that you are in right now, so make the most of it. And the three days, eh? And life is just three days. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Today is done. It's finished. What have you gotten? Now, make use of it. Tomorrow is not promised. ثم قول أبي ذر رضي الله عنه أن الوسط السنة بدر الصحابة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا ثلاث ساعات. He goes to bed three hours or three moments. ساعة ساعة مضت وساعة أنت فيها وساعة لا تدري أتدركها أم لا. And Abu Dhar similar saying says, an hour that has gone by, an hour you are in right now, and an hour that you don't know if you're gonna see it actually. So he visit them down to an hour, right? So even though the moment, the moment has happened. فلست فلست تملك بالحقيقة إلا ساعة واحدة إذ إذ الموت إذ الموت من ساعة إلى ساعة. Right, so you don't actually own anything in reality except the very moments you are in. Because ساعة in Arabic also means moments, not hour. It means moments. ساعة ساعة. As I said, ساعة. When you call the day of judgment, you call it. Right? It means the moment that the earth comes to an end. The moment, the moment. I can also mean hour, it doesn't mean clock, right? Everything. Right? But here you mean a moment. Eh? So it says that you don't have anything in reality except the that wild moments that you are in. For surely death it is between a moment to another moment. It's one moment to another is death. And death comes all of a sudden. So قول شيخنا ثم قال شيخنا رحمه الله الدنيا ثلاثة أنفاس نفس مضى عمل عملت فيه ما عملت ونفس أنت فيه ونفس لا تدري أتدركه أم لا. Another one, eh? Right. So it uh, his shaykh mentioned that the dunya is three breaths. A breath that has happened, a breath that you are in. Right. Also, the breath that has happened that you do in it, whatever you do in it. A breath that you are in, and a breath that you have no idea if it will come to you or not. It comes in mutanafisin, comes in mutanafisin, nafasan fafajahu al mautu wa qabla nafsil aqa. So how many breaths? How many people take breaths? They take a breath, and then comes to them before the next breath can be taken. It hits them before the next breath comes. فلست تملك إلا نفسا واحدا بالحقيقة لا يوما ولا ساعة. As you do not own except for one breath in reality. It's not a day nor an hour. It's a breath. فبادر في هذا النفس الواحد إلى طاعتي قبل أي يفوت وإلى توبتي. So so rush, rush, badir, rush. I do this one breath that you have. I do obedience. Make make every breath a breath of obedience. We're coming into the nine days of your hijjah. These nine days should not be spent in heedlessness at all. The greatest days of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the year. Right, it's the greatest greatest day by 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 consensus. There's no this is greater than this. The nine days of your hijjah. I completed the tenth day and then the three days of the three days of the three days of the three. Right, so these days do not at all waste a moment. Spend your time, your moments in obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If there are things in your life that you are still doing right, at this point in time, after going to this book, halfway, almost halfway, right? 
okay lah, wanted, wanted of this bookworm was if you're still engaging in things that waste your time, right, then you are not getting the words that's being said to you here. You're not getting it. Right, because you can still waste time, you can still spend your time doing mindset, you can still, you know, uh, watch all these things that are that have no meaning. Right, and no benefit. Nothing. You know, there's not an argument to it. Because anyone who looks at these things that, or that people watch, you know, on movies or TV or whatsoever, they know honestly what does it do for you in your akhira? What? What does it do for you? Nothing. If you need to rest, then go and rest, take a walk. I take a walk, sleep, you know, it, uh, it go cycling. <laughs> right? Something that is more beneficial. Right? In a way, and if, in fact, when you do all these things, you can rest yourself even better. Right? By, by, if you take a nice walk and listen to the Quran you know, in your ears, right? it rests yourself better right? than to sit down and fill your eyes with maksiat. Right? Fill your hearts with maksiat. You're not going to rest yourself, you're going to perturb yourself even more. Right, by doing this, eh? Right, so, uh, subhanallah, subhanallah, you know, at, at this point, you need to really wake up right, to the reality of this world. So it says here, right, Masjidah Muhammad, فَبَادِرْ فِي هَذَا النَّفْسِ وَاحِدِ إِلَى طَاعَةِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَفُوتَ So to rush to this, to this one uh, breath towards obedience before it actually passes you by, before you miss it. وَإِلَى تَوْبَةِ And to repentance, tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because perhaps you in your next breath will be dead. Right? You'll be dead in your next breath. Right? This is why this book is very hard for us to you know, hold on to. Because he says here, and don't be so concerned, O oh, nafs, with your risk. Right, Allah has put aside your risk for you. You work, you work an amount, an amount, but don't be so, don't let it consume you. Your worry, you know, don't, don't, let, don't, don't worry you. I right, just, you know, go ahead, you know, and 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 do what you do to earn your rizki. Right, but don't, but Allah, but trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You put in the effort, you trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because He says, don't be so worried about about about, 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 about hoarding wealth. Don't be worried about hoarding wealth, because it could be. That you don't live long enough to actually need it. Mm-hmm. You won't live long enough that you need this wealth that you are hoarding. Okay. Allah knows best. You know, subhanAllah, Allah knows best. فَيَكُونُ وَقْتُكَ بَائِعًا And it could be that you are wasting your time. Right? Gathering wealth for a future that you are not promised. Right? So you have been wasting your, your time. وَالْهَمُّ فَاضِلًا right? And your worry was all put to waste. And then the same way that the people say that you, that you worry about things that you never meet, that should never happen. You worry, 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 and it doesn't happen to you actually in the first place. It's not there. Uh, but your, your mind does that. Your mind worries about things in the future that no one says will happen to you anyway. Uh, that's one Allah. Or no one can actually guarantee that it will happen. Because all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is the one who guarantees everything uh, for you. وَمَا عَسَى أَنْ Al insanu bi rizqi li yawmin wahid. Right, so and it is that if a person, you know, uh, uh, is worried about his risk, about his provision, right, for one day, aw sa'atin wahidatin, or one hour, aw nafsin wahidin, or one breath. Right, so what, you know, what will benefit him if he has his worry? Ama tazkuri, an ama tazkuri na. ما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأصحابه Do you not remember what the Prophet of Islam said to his companions? ألا تعجبون من أسامة المشتري بصبر شهر إن أسامة لطول أمري Wallahi ma wada'atu qadaman Fadlantu anni arfa'uha Wala laqamatan Fadlantu anni asiruha Hatta yadrak Hatta yadrak Hatta yadudrikani Al-mawtu Wal-nadhi nafsi biyalihi Inna ma tu'aduna la'at Wa ma andum bimu'ajizin So the Sultan will say Aren't you amazed? Right, by uh, Usama, 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 Usama,
right, uh, enough for a month. And she bought enough for a month. Right? And, and, and that for Osama to, to, to buy enough for a month, he's having long hopes. And for sure, he's going to prepare for a month, he's having long hopes. Because this is a hadith, that was in Right? And he says, by Allah, I don't place my foot down that I think I will raise my uh, that, I will, that I will raise I will raise my foot and I put my foot down and I don't think I will raise it up right? and I don't think that I will eat a morsel that I think I'm going to uh, swallow it or going to put it right? Right. Right. so and he says that for sure he, Right, uh, I said that, that death might, might overtake me right, before I do any of these things. And I swear by the one who is hands, my soul, I said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for surely what you are promised will come and you will not uh, be incapable right, of, uh, it, will, it, 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 means it will overtake me. Right, it will overtake me. Right, it means death. Right, so here, so here we see right, that Osama, he bought uh, and so what happened with Osama was that he actually bought a slave girl and he paid her her wage for the month that is to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing, yeah. But by the sense that like, he think he's expecting that she will be there for the next month. You know, in a way. Yeah, of course I mean you're expecting you to make some money. Right, it's best fair. No. Right, it's, it's not best or worst. Oh, this is just an example. It's not a fake It's not a fake Okay. It's an example. It's an example. It's not a shaking head. It's an example. Right, so just don't say that you can't buy, you can't pay, okay, you can't pay, you know, you can't buy. Don't say that. Right, but it's just that, you know, uh, that you know, not to hope you live for so long. I don't hope that your life is going to be, you know, going to reach 40. I'm going to ask you, you know, what you say. You don't think you're going to hit 40 or you're going to hit, or you're gonna hit uh, 50, you know, or 60, right? You know, no one has promised us that how many people at the age of 30, 35, 36, 37 pass away, right? Are you going to hit 40 yet? Right? So, and we know plenty of people in their 30s pass away, you know, of the Sahaba in their 30s pass away. Right? So don't think that, oh, we are far from death age. We're not far from death age. But we feel that we are far. We're not far. Right? And if you, oh man, like old person, if you remember all of this, uh, these reminders, right? and if you were to re- make yourself repeat it over and over again, to remind yourself about that. You find yourself rushing towards obedience and uh, rushing towards and, and hastening Tawbat. Rushing towards Allah SWT. And your sins will stop. It will fall from you. And you will stop committing your sins. What does Hudu do? What does he do? What does he do if he do And you will abstain from him seeking his dunya. Where you have, 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 where you you have, where you have, where you have, where you have, where because you tend to not take on the dunya. So your life, your, your, your countenance will be lightened. And also your tiredness will be lightened. Mm-hmm. Because your countenance will be lightened. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, your, your, your countenance your country will be lightened. And your countenance will be lightened. Right. In the next word. وَيَقَعُوا قَلْبُكَ فِي تَذَكُّرِ الْأَخِرَةِ وَأَمْوَالِهَا And your heart will be constantly remembering the Akhira and the states of the Akhira and the heart will be constantly remembering the Akhira and it says وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا مِنْ نَفْسٍ إِلَى نَفْسٍ نَفَسٍ إِلَى نَفَسٍ And it's just a breath for your breath and it's just a breath for your death 
تسيروا إليها وتعاينها وتعاينها واحدا فواحدا and you will go towards it and you count it one by one وتزولوا عنك القسوة and the heart will be removed from you and you will be your heart will suffer and you will remind us of the next word فبدو لك رقة وصفوة and you will begin to get soft and purified and you get purified in your heart and you get soft towards reminders فاستشعروا عن عند ذلك الخوف من الله تعالى وحشيته and you will feel very strongly in this situation fear of Allah and awe of fear of Allah سبحانه فيستقيم لك أمر عبادتك and with this the affairs of your obedience will be made upright will be rectified for you the obedience of Allah ويقوى الرجاء في أن تسعد في عقابتك and you will be strengthened in your hope to want to have a good and a peaceful hereafter and what does that for of that he has written it in his books and you divide it by number of days in which you live on this earth right, you will come down to like every day he will have written I can't remember the exact number but about like five to six pages from the day he was born that means if you will take the number of days that he wrote that he wrote but he wrote so much <laughs> he wrote so much 
he divided number of years to number of days of his life, they would they mean that every day he lived that number of that number, he wrote that number of pages. For us like one page a day. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. So that means that, that if he began writing in his twenties, when he for twenty years after and he died at forty-five, it means he wrote how many pages a day? You know, of of, of and his pages up to today benefit the Ummah. The, 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 our, the people, and even he lived for 45 years. So he lived a longer life more than anybody else. Right? Because he spent, oh, every day, <laughs> subhanAllah. Why does even read a few days a day? Even write and read. He just read a few days a day. He just says, like, subhanAllah. Is that like, um, you know how you just said, you sleep eight hours a day, that's a third of your life gone. What if you ensure that your sleep is an that? Like, uh, you need it. Yeah, yeah, but not excessive. Okay, eight hours too long. I mean, eight hours yeah, too long. Yeah. Yeah, so six okay. hours, so that's a quarter of five Yeah, hours. so that means you need that I'm sleeping so that I can uh, up fresh and do my ibadah. Yes, you do for ibadah. Right. So it's the same sleep. thing with food also. And so it's ibadah. It's ibadah, but it's ibadah, but it's ibadah to an extent. You get your reward like that. Had that still been replaced with Quran, the, ibad- the reward is higher lah. Right, so it's, it's busy with an hour. You can choose your own hour. So you sleep with no, with no intention, it's a zero. Right, if you sleep two subo, it's a zero. You sleep no sleep. So you sleep at two subo. Right, if you sleep, you know, early at night to wake up with the hydrogen, then it becomes a uh, rewarded sleep. Right, if you're able to, like some of the, of the ulama, of the scholars, they just don't sleep very much. Because to them, you know, even that is a waste of time. Because you can do a lot of other things. You know, other things sleeping. Right, so for us, this is why, this is why that Nuwazali in Ibn Gaya, he says, you know, that if you cannot go out there and, 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 and spread the religion, you know, or spread goodness, nor are you going out there uh, to learn, if you remember in Ibn Gaya, if you've learned this before, can, that it's, it's in there. Right, if you learn, uh, you can't go out and learn right, uh, this religion to spread it. If you can't do what is good or kind, then sleep. Because right, in sleeping, you're going to stop yourself from doing what is haram. <laughs> So sleeping is a better situation than doing haram of course. But, but of course, ex obedience themselves is better than sleeping. Ah. Uh, ex is better than sleeping. But of course, you do it to an extent whereby you are able to handle lah. Right, all, all, all to, onto the individual. So if you think and handle the amount of sleep, and then you can you can function thereafter, then good for you. Right, but if you think you can handle that kind of sleep, you need a bit more, then you can. It's not haram. It's not. But everybody is to their own level. Everybody is on their own level. So I want to finish the chapter. I saw it. Uh, so sorry, there's someone with long coat, right? They will, or someone with short coat. Someone with short coat, right? They will have a lot more ex obedience when they have to make use of their time, right? They will not worry so much, actually. They have less worries because they have less uh, you know, short coats. They have uh, pleasure in their hearts, a contentment in their hearts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And their hearts will be illuminated and they will be full of goodness. It's very full of goodness. So, yeah, I'm not ready to do it, it's, it's in my notes. So, they'll have a uh, uh, short concept. Right. So, here it says, Laqad Hukia, and it has been narrated of the narrated Anna Zurara uh, bin Awfa. رحمه الله تعالى قيل له في النوم بعد موته أي الأعمال أبلغ فيما عندكم قال الرضا وقصر الأمن right. So you know, when, when uh, this, this uh, scholar or this righteous person was in his dream was in a dream after his death he was asked what was the most beneficial thing that you did in this world he said الرضا الرضا من الله تعالى Allah being pleased with him and Qasul Amal and having short books. Right, so so having short books, which push him towards acts of obedience and towards uh, uh, worshiping Allah. What were they doing that? What were they doing that? And when he was asked, he was seen, he was seen in someone's dreams. After he died, he was in the one place. Yeah. 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 Yeah
خلاص بقى على العيا اه ابي شوت فانزو لنفسك لنفسك ايها الاخ سلوكي الساق وبرد وبذل 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 المجهود في هذا الاصل الكبير فان فانه الاهم والاعظم في سلاح القلب والنفس والله تعالى ولي التوفيق بفضله ورحمته ورحمته Yeah, so oh, look, so so oh, look, oh, my brother, be yourself, right? And 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 give the best you can, the most you can, right? To this very uh, great basis right, of worship, just to have less shelter, uh, hope. For surely it is of the greatest and the most important thing in the rectification of your heart and yourself. And Allah is the one who gives tawfiq and by His grace and by His mercy. So it's not a lot. Right. So this is really this of the uh, of the greatest of attributes. Right. To actually have short hair. And the next next the next uh, chapter is Hasan. Hasan is called the mother of all major diseases. It's called the mother of all diseases. Mother meaning that from Hasan comes the sprouts. All the other religious in Taba in Hassan. You always mention. I cannot find because I've not gone through all of it. But uh, I'm still waiting for the one that you teach last time regarding the 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 meat. Ah yes. The meat. Yeah, the meat of uh, because mm-hmm. there's one ayah in the Quran which is very big. It's very not in detail mm-hmm. because they say as long as a people from the book, but that mm-hmm. is like the first testimony in the book. So that's it. It's always very grey line in terms yeah. of that. You see. 
and the way they might not say this stuff to you, the same thing as yeah. also like um, married somebody yeah. who is a Jewish or the whole of the book, which is not from the first yeah. first uh, yeah. testament of the people yeah. from the book. Most of yeah. them are following the second testament yeah. of the book, yeah. which is not which is not counted, counted as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that is the yeah. that is like very very grey line that yeah. needs to be. And also of the conditions of eating their food is that you know they are people who hold on to their law. Yeah. Uh, so if you know that these people are people who are sinners, yeah. and you can't. It's not particular about the law. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. only that you know that they're like really like staunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have to be particular yeah, about yeah. their own food and their own law. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see them like this. Don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's very, very big when it comes to this, yeah. especially when you travel yeah. a lot. Yeah. And, you and even like some of us call say, even up to Muslims. So you see Muslims who you know they don't care about halal haram, yeah. then to have was was and yeah. do not uh, yeah. consume their food because you don't know if they care enough yeah. that it's halal. Yeah, because it's, it's just stated the people from the book. They never yeah. say first, second, second. Yeah, yeah. So that is the reason why when they say no, you can't get somebody coming from Christian family or Catholic family. Yeah, it depends. It depends. It depends. And I say, but it still depends on how they kill the meat because some of them yeah. shoot, some of them yeah. slaughter, but maybe yeah. slaughter they might not say anything. So, they don't know how knowledgeable they are also. Yeah. <laughs> they're not knowledgeable. They don't, yeah, they don't know yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very big. Some of those, you just have to say, it's like you have no choice. You know, so it's, uh, it's a lot of... Um, I see the vegetables. Vegetables, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Vegetable, fish or yeah, whatever. Just is something safer. Huh? It's, a, it's, a, it's a method of um, cleansing and detoxing. Yeah. Just, you know, you cannot eat meat in certain yeah. countries. You have yeah. no choice. Yeah. So, you know, it's like detoxing your body, you yeah. know. Yeah. Good cleansing is <laughs> good for you. Exactly. <laughs> Even back in the Middle East, like what you mentioned, they don't check certain they things. Don't check. They don't check, same thing. So there is a lot about...